Weird thumbnail, huh? Don't worry, it will make sense in a moment. But yeah, this is also going to be kind of a weird episode today, as we got a lot of different topics to cover, because while I was doing the time lapsing building up the downtown last episode, a lot of stuff happened which we need to address today. Namely, the camp high, real time mod issues cleanup, public transportation changes, financial stuff, and industry fine tuning. Oh, peeps, Dragadeo, welcome back to the next episode of Building Dragon, which covers a lot of topics hardly covered elsewhere but of critical importance to our cities. Glad you tuned in because I'm sharing again lots of my thought processes with you guys so you will become better at planning your cities in the future. Let's start with the thumbnail, right? Well, our lovely tea sipper Biffa, you know, Junction Fixer Extraordinaire, that one, released a video back in June 2022. Dang, how time flies by. In that video he was basically building a campus area, leveled it up to the next level and as you can see in the title, this is considered a pro move for City Skylines players. You know, anything Biffa says must be true because he's the most watched City Skylines channel, right? Well, there's one issue with this. While we did the build up time lapse, both of my camp high leveled up, skipping the second level and went from unrecognized straight to renowned. So if what Biva did was a pro move, what does this make me then? Uber pro? Huxor? I don't know, you tell me in the comments. His video back then was about the financial aspects. So these were the camp hooks and costs before the time lapse. These are the campus's costs at renowned. Let's say we freed up quite the amount of spending which we could put elsewhere. But this also means we now may put all the new buildings into our camp high. Now because of some experimenting with mods back in the days, we have everything unlocked. But our camp huxen just reached renowned level. So I need to do a quick look up over at the wiki which of the buildings we may actually use now. I did remember that we were allowed to have the second faculties at renowned so I did put those in while doing the skyline time lapse. And regarding the other buildings, we may use everything up to the statue. Use. Let's put them in. Yeah, I know, not the detailing you probably expected, but mind you, our campuses are not complete yet. They will unlock more stuff over time. So my motivation to detail them is just not there yet. Sorry to disappoint, but no worries, we will get there soon. Because I noticed something. So the campus I required quite a lot of time to finish their first academic year. And look where we are standing now, like just one week left. This made me think, maybe the real time mod still messed with the timings. And that took them so long, meaning now that the cycle started over, the timings are reset. So I went testing that theory. I deleted the baseball stadium and placed it again. So its next match is now at the 2nd of July in 2025, so in a few weeks. In the episode when I did the campus oxen, these were placed at the same day. And look, the American football stadium right now has its next match in over three years. So let's reset that as well. By the way, a little trick here, instead of deleting and rebuilding it, just do the reset object function in move it, which will become very handy when we also want to reset the soccer stadium, for otherwise we would also have to tear down all those highways around it to properly place it again at the very same spot. 6th of July 2025, that looks way better. Because the stadiums are kind of supposed to keep our sims happy by delivering victorious matches, we probably do not want all those matches to happen at the same day. So so to spread these match dates out a bit, I'd advise to reset them with at least two days apart. Also, this allows real sports fans to visit all the matches after each other instead of having to decide which one to visit if they would all happen at the same time. Now, faculties. We added the School of Environmental Studies and the School of Tourism and Travel, which means we should have some excess garbage processing. There we go. And our commercial zones now earn a bit more money and our leisure commercials create additional attractiveness. Because of that, let us finish the downtown zoning these two spots and then also add the uniques here. I just checked, we definitely qualify for both. So let us add a little bit more culture to our city. Okay. And then our campus is just leveled up once again. Now this is cool. For now I think they are finally able to earn us some money. Okay, so the next steps are first put in the three new buildings we got. Then we need to check whether our campus is Soxen are able to level up to prestigious and then we want to make some money. So each campus has like three fields of 
science study thingies. So I think a about seven academic staff should be quite enough and then we also activate the uh, sponsorship for the varsity team sports and this should then finally generate us some money and let's not forget to also reset the soccer stadium all right next topic on the list is public transportation and i noticed i never really showed you guys how i set it up except in one of the very early episodes of the series a few things to consider here tourists love scenery so if you give tourists the option to travel from one point to the other and they are given the option of monorail or any other form of public transportation then tourists will pick the monorail actually i don't have the numbers to back that up but i remember to have picked that up from the reddits a few years back and i considered it a really noteworthy detail this is why we have the monorail going pretty much parallel to this metro line running along our downtown shopping pedestrian mile i built way before plazas and promenades came out by the way, Colossal Order, this is how it should have been done. Don't get me wrong, plazas and promenades is cool and all, but the service point mechanic, not a big fan of those, because City Skylines, in the end, is supposed to be a traffic simulation game. And you kinda robbed us of the key challenge of fixing traffic, which made the game fun. Well, at least for me and probably also a big part of my audience. By solving traffic in the pedestrian zones for us, when adding a magical teleportation transport option, you pretty much added an easy mode. Not cool, so I'm not so much a fan of these new mechanics. I like the roads and buildings though. Anyway, back to public transportation. I use buses locally, so whenever there is a station of sorts, a bus line is close by, spreading the sims out, or when inbound, dropping them off at a station. Another use case would be connecting neighborhoods, for example, if they are separated by, you know, bigger road or highway thing, or as in this case, actually have having just two stops but using the buses as an expressway between one of the main transport hubs and the harbor. When buses collect people and bring them to a station, then Metro is what shoves them around throughout the city. In general, I create lines which go back and forth and try to predict where people want to go to. So you are finding lines which collect a lot of people in the residential area and bring them into the commercial or downtown area. Others collect residentials and then offer them a station to switch to a line that brings them over into the industry area. Or there is also a line that goes from the commercial through the residential over into the industry area. And because all the lines are connected between each other, for example by this teal one or this green one, they can easily reach every part of the city. Trams initially I just put in there for aesthetic reasons, like making them run along my arterials. But then noticed for example at this station that a lot of people will board the tram train and then get off like one or two stations later which then kind of made me think about implementing this additional bus line just to reduce the load on the tram trains because otherwise i would have to put more in there and the tram would just not be running cost effectively right now we are having a little bit of a situation in the city because the city is losing population we were at 120,000, like in the middle of the time lapse the strange thing is we have residential demand but as it looks like we also have 12,000 untaken jobs and still an unemployment rate of 16%. So I figured the city kind of just needs a while to, you know, get all those employed and such. But uh, this is kind of disturbing because we really lose lots of population right now. So hopefully this is going to balance itself out soon. This sadly also causes the number of students in our campuses to decline along with them the amount of tuition fees resulting in a net loss for the time being until the situation has stabilized. We were transporting around 13,000 people before so this has shrunk as well. Sadly this also affected our earnings from the public transport. I did implement a few new bus lines in the downtown area as well as this sunken tram station which then finally connects the line to the old town. But as all the transport lines are not used as frequently as they used to be our earnings decline. 
point. And since the city is going to grow at some point, it doesn't make sense to adjust the lines right now. But let me share my experience of what kind of public transportation could be turned into a profit very easily. Number one of our list are buses. Before the exodus, our bus lines were making up to 1.5k per cycle. Sure, you need to adjust the amount and type of bus to the actual usage. If they are filled up around 60%, they pay for the bus and with everything above, they also compensate for the cost of the bus depot. Next on the list are sightseeing buses. Same principle. Initially, the depot creates a big loss, but as your city grows and you put in lots of unique buildings and monuments, then you also can create lots of interesting sightseeing bus tours. And because of their high ticket fees, they easily pay for themselves and the depot after you set up enough of them. You will hardly need more than one of the sightseeing buses on a line, except of course it would be very long. Actually, I was discussing the viability of buses with Eckhart Eckardian. I hope I didn't butcher that name. Anyway, his uh, assumption was that the big buses basically they do not transport enough people but because they are so big they just add up to the congestion on the streets and that is kind of true in the beginning but as soon as you have it set up like the buses collect and bring you to a station of sorts like a metro station and then when you exit the metro there's again a bus line waiting for you to bring you even closer to your target. As soon as you have the entire city set up like this, this entire public transport really reduces the amount of cars on your streets and you need to remember sims are lazy if they don't have to walk they won't so give them the option to use a bus or something else and they will now to make sightseeing tours actually bring in a profit you have to create very attractive tours to create them you need to check your attractiveness info panel and then pretty much go from purple to purple to another purple yada yada and that's how you plan your sightseeing bus tours now recently in the skyline time lapse i placed lots of skyscrapers which are unique buildings and they would be considered parks from the game. Which is not ideal because they are so big and I decided they better serve us as actually being offices and a few of them even being residentials. In this regard, very much thank you to Mervis because he suggested about a year ago that I could use the Rico Revisited or in general the Rico mod to, you know, plop buildings and such. I am not so much a plopper as you may have guessed already. But regarding the amount of skyscrapers we used in the downtown area, I am really happy to have the option to repurpose them for something more suited than just being parks. Because I mean, we are placing, you know, all those little parking lots around there anyway, so they have enough parks. So yeah, thank you for that suggestion. While at it, let me just add that I didn't go overboard with the amount of office space or something. All I did, I was comparing the size of the footprint and the height of the building to other buildings we already had in the city and then adjusted the amount accordingly. Guess what? While we were waiting for the situation to stabilize, I noticed that this took quite some time and I was checking in on our festival area and it looks like we had six of our six concerts required to level up our festival area. So let's do that. Awesome. Uh, what's that? Oh, so we turned it around. Aha, interesting. I like that. All right, guys, industry fine tuning. You remember that our faculty reduced the garbage accumulation in the city. This means our recycling centers have less garbage to process, which means that they are going to recycle less processed materials. Basically, they are just producing forestry, ore and oil materials, no uh, farming. So if the recycling centers produce less, we probably would had to adjust our processing production of those materials. The thing is, as the population shrinked and it is all still in an unstable state, yada yada yada, I am not going to adjust the processing production right now. But what we were looking for would be either imports, which would be a very clear indicator of, okay, we have to produce more of those processed materials, or let's say you'd be monitoring the warehouses which have the balance setting and something there the fill status would basically drop to around 35% this means if this drops further this warehouse is going to import now the reason for me not having to do any adjustments right now is that as the population reduced itself this also created a shortage in workforce 
which then slowed down the generic industry, meaning its consumption of processed materials as well as its output of goods was reduced. So this actually played in our hand right now, but we will have to adjust the production in the future. Some Actually, I'm not sure when this is going to happen because I checked the recycling centers and pretty much all of them still have, you know, garbage to process. So we'll have to wait and see when that moment in time is going to come. Any second now? Yes, there we are. Let's quickly check. Yes, both prestigious. Awesome. I mean, it just took us three years to get our population back, but this time they actually have jobs. You know what we are doing now, right? Yeah, you know. Let's do that. Here's the thing. When it comes to designing campus I then there are some rules, right? I mean, lots of people go like, yeah, and greenery and yada, 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 and nicely put and distance between buildings, yada, yada, yada. But the important thing is, like there are three important kind of buildings. The study halls, the clubs and the cafeterias, right? Those are extremely important. And there is another rule, like the cafeterias need to be in tripping distance to the study halls and also the faculties. Like pretty much they need to be everywhere and there's always too few of them. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. This is exactly where the learning happens, either in kitchens or cafeterias, nowhere else. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to have each club double just because they are giving nice pony but let, that's not the thing that the thing is that there if for example if you want to go to the drama club and there are the cool guys and the cool guys don't like you then you should have an option to join another drama club right yeah and a little competition also increases quality right because everybody wants to win at the end of the year so that's that's the thing and um yeah what else yeah, cafeteria, I mentioned that they need to be pretty much everywhere. Yeah, we will have two of them for each campus and um, also two study halls. Just because, you know, when you walk out of your faculty and you just had an audit or something and then you want to um, study, you should instantly have a refugium to calm down and get some snacks. Cafeteria, right? Get some snacks and then just let all that stuff sink in and then you go over your notes and sort that stuff and so that's very important. Like, really, right? Cool. Okay guys, let's quickly talk about how this is set up. As you can see, we are just slightly above the requirement for prestigious level and we're making some income. These are my policies for both. And here I reduced the academic staff to 18 because we have like two buildings which push the creation chance. And in this campus, we also have one active trophy, which kind of gives us around 30 attractiveness or something. Without this trophy, the campus would not qualify for prestigious. This is because we only have 17 of the academic works. Now let's check the other campus. So you can see as well, also just slightly above, making a little bit more money. And here we have no trophy going, but we have 19 academic works. So this pushes the attractiveness slightly above the 1,800. So I guess with the closing cinematics, this concludes our episode. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like if you liked it. And it would be awesome to see you guys next time. Bye.